Do you like harnessing the power of chi to explode your enemies in one giant radiating blast? Do you enjoy raging like a barbarian and going just complete bananas and punching the hell out of your enemies? Maybe you even like using your enemies as a weapon themselves. I am happy to announce my revamped Raging Barbarian Monk build. Hey guys, I'm Ronan. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are revisiting one of my very first builds ever made, my Raging Monk build. I've been making content for this game pretty much since it came out. Some of my older builds are a little outdated in the way I present information and just information in general, and can certainly be updated to my quality that I have now. And that's why we are revisiting one of my all time favorite builds. In the latest update, there were patch notes that stated due to a bug, there was rage damage not affecting fist damage. That is fixed now. So my raging monk build is even better than before. And I certainly want to redo it that way you can get the best information out there and have a lot of fun. I think the concept of being angry, going like in a furious rage while becoming extremely tanky, but also just beating the hell out of someone with your fist, throwing them off a cliff. Like it's so fun. I love that concept, which is why I want to redo it. Like and subscribe if you're new. Comment what you want to see next. And if you guys want to become a member like Suicide Squash, hit join down below. You will get shout out to my videos, early access to my videos, and some additional perks from my live streams. Let's go ahead and break this video down. In case you don't understand how the fist damage works, your martial arts levels scale from 1d4 to 1d6, and at level 9, your fist damage will be base 1d8 with 10 key points in total. My starting stats are on screen now, 17 strength, dexterity 14, constitution 14, wisdom 13, and I know this may seem a little odd, but this will make sense a little later when we talk about feats and gear. How you level is up to you. No matter what, start out at level 1 barbarian before multiclassing into monk, that way you unlock medium armor proficiency and rage as well. There are only going to be two feats you need to utilize for this build. Tavern Brawler will get your strength to 18 while also doubling your strength modifier for your attack rolls and damage with your fist, as well as any time you decide to throw an enemy or throw a weapon. Your second feat will be Ability Improvement to get your strength to 20, and if you combine this with the Potion of Everlasting Vigor, you will have 22 strength, which is very powerful giving you a plus 12 modifier to your damage and hit chance for your fist attacks. The concept of this build is to combine the extra fist damage you get from raging while also being extremely tanky with the additional damage that you have from being a open hand monk while also having the ability to debuff your enemies or do massive AOE explosions with resonating fists. Alright guys, I did want to showcase just a quick demonstration of this at Acts 1 and 2 because I did have a few complaints that people weren't understanding how to utilize my builds for the early game. So I did want to showcase that I just hit level 8, but I'm not actually going to level here. I'm going to show you how you can use this pretty much as soon as you get to Act 2 and get all the gear that you want. And most of this gear comes from Act 1 and the playstyle is going to be extremely similar even in the early game levels of the game like levels one to five and stuff like that so the gear i'm using is the holy lance helm the flesh melter's cloak the luminous armor gloves of belligerent skies boots of stormy clamor wound closure necklace ring of free action and the crusher's ring for the extra movement my bow is the bow of awareness that you buy from row and moonglow in act one for the extra initiative i do have the adamantine shield here because this shield is amazing because you are a barbarian, you can use shields. This is great because this will forever make sure you can never get crit. Attackers, if they miss, get sent reeling. Like it, it's so good. I absolutely love this shield and I highly recommend you get it if you plan to use a shield in your offhand. Another great alternative though is to use a sentinel shield. So because we are at monk level six now, you unlock some really cool things here. We're using Manifestation of Soul to add extra radiant damage to our fist attacks here. That way we will automatically proc Gloves of Belligerent Skies, 
which will then proc the boots because we will automatically apply a radiant shockwave of every single fist attack we do. Any hit that misses has a chance to do radiant damage back at the enemy, and every hit that actually hits us will do acid damage back to the attacker. And because we are a barbarian, we do rage, and although I don't have the subclass for barbarian yet, the rage you get will still reduce all physical damage by 50%. You could also, at this level, use your Potion of Everlasting Vigor to go ahead and get your strength to 20 right now, and with feats later on, you can get it to 22 strength. Of course, you could also use the Adamantine Scale Armor instead if you don't want this. It's just slightly more AC, but we already get the other benefits this armor would normally give from our shield. Alright, so to start out, because I am doing this solo, I am going to use a Potion of Speed just to make the combat a little bit more fluent. Normally, you would have friends with me, right? So we'll go ahead and use this. Enter turn-based mode. And we can open up on the one to the left or the guy to the right. Either or works. I say we go to the person to the left here and try to throw them to knock them prone. Or we could simply attack her. So how about we just open up attacking her, giving her a little bit of a deep. So I rolled pretty dang low right there, which is a little unfortunate for my damage, but I did want to showcase something here. The reason I didn't open up with Flurry of Blows is because I do want to get my Rage as soon as possible. That way, I'm a little bit more physically tanky right now, and it will affect other damage as well. So let's go ahead and showcase that here. We're going to punch her. And the damage here, you can see plus two damage from rage. So you do get the rage damage. And you could see what happened to her there. I moved, so she got opportunity attack on me. She missed, she was sent reeling, which is also considered a debuff. So she got the extra reverberation damage and all that fun stuff. And the helm proc as well, which gave her the radiant damage. She also proc another thing of reverberation, which is why she now got knocked prone. And because she is prone, guess what? I have advantage on my attacks, which is pretty cool. See, look, these guys miss and then they get debuffed, possibly knocked prone. It's such a great combo. I was actually hoping one of them were going to hit me because I wanted to show how powerful the one item is here. All right, so he did hit me good. This is when we use wholeness of body. This thing is ridiculous. This will recharge half your key and it will give you your monk level times three in HP back. So we're going to use this. We now have two bonus actions. So now we can really do the pain. So this character in front of us, Adapt Marin, let's go ahead and just knock her down with Flurry of Blows push. This will knock her back if she had anywhere to be knocked back to. This will probably kill her. And the only reason she survived is because she had Death Ward. So now instead, I'm going to throw her and use her as a weapon, probably against the guy that's already down. She's gone. I did a little bit of damage to him, which is cool. Throwing someone counts as an extra attack. So I can go ahead and just punch someone else. But I do have another bonus action here. So instead, let's use our bonus action to possibly knock someone prone here or to knock someone stagger. I could use stunning strike, but right now my wisdom, because I'm a low level, is only 13. is not as high as I would want it to be. So more than likely, you would fail your DC check with this. So instead, let's try to knock them prone instead. Oh, he died anyway. So we're going to go ahead and now punch this guy in front of us. We'll go ahead and get the auto crit. And now I'm going to end my turn. All right. And the reason that I lost my turn there is because my potion ran out. But you can see, because of all the debuffs they already had from all the Radiant Orbs and Reeling, which stacks for them the miss even more, you can see 
They have negative chance to hit from radiating orbs, negative chance from them reeling. It is, even though my AC is only 19 of this build, you're a little tankier than you look. So with all them knocked prone, I can just do whatever I want. So let's go ahead and just attack this guy, maybe knock him back some. We'll punch him. But then this last guy, depending on how far he is, I can almost throw him off the cliff. Not quite. So instead, we'll punch him. If he doesn't die, Flurry of Blues. All right. So I do have my bonus action I can use for Unarmed Strike, or I could use Key and do Flurry of Blues. Because he's almost dead, we will just simply use Unarmed Strike. And he's gone. And this is only for low level combat here. All these guys were a higher level than me. I'm not level eight because I didn't, I decided not to level up and look how powerful this was being solo. It is extremely strong and it gets even better as you level up more. All right, guys, this next demo showcase is going to be utilizing gear that pretty much everyone will have access to literally as soon as you get to act three. The only differences here are the fact that I now have the boots of the uninhibited Koshigo. So I add my wisdom modifier to my damage with my melee fist, which is really nice. Because not only will that affect the physical damage, that will also affect manifestation of soul as well. I do have a new illithid power. The only illithid powers I really recommend for this build is to get luck of the far realms and then go all the way down and get call of the weak. It is extremely powerful. And if you want to get anything else there too, feel free. I did upgrade my bow. I'm using the Hellrider longbow now, which is pretty much just an upgraded version of the bow we showcased a little bit earlier. You have extra initiative and advantage on perception checks. I'm still rocking my adamantine shield here. I did switch out my gloves for the flawed hell dusk instead. That way my physical this attacks will do additional 1d4 necrotic and possibly inflict bleeding on the enemy as well. So I do miss out on reverberation, but I still keep my radiant orb stacking as well and reeling, which is pretty nice. And I can knock people prone regardless just by using my flurry of blows anyway. The rings are exactly the same. My necklace, I'm now using the necklace you get in Act 3. The reason we use this is because this gives you plus one wisdom, giving you to 14. But it also gives you the gift aid that you would want to use before combat, because once you raid, or rage you can't actually use spells so that just increases our hp a little bit which is pretty nice everything else is exactly the same though and then after this i will showcase the final version of the build for those that want to respec once you get the necklace from act three which you get from fighting Raphael, and once you do that you would get the legendary gloves at the same time this build skyrockets and damage even more and it's <laughs> even more fun than before so I'll showcase that after this, but this is combat for most people that are just getting to act three. Now, if you didn't want to use the flawed hell dust gloves, feel free to use the sparkle hands or gloves of crushing as well. I just like these because it also has a chance to inflict bleeding as well. So we'll go ahead and start out kind of like I did before. I will use my potion of speed and the turn based mode. And we're going to go ahead and just open up by punching the target in front of us. I'm going to throw a missile back at him. All right, so now that it's my turn, let's go ahead and rage. And we are the bear heart raging here, so once I start to rage, all damage except psychic will be resistant to which is nice all right now that that happened i'm going to go ahead and actually utilize wholeness of body right now and i'm going to use one of my bonus actions for resonation punch and i'm gonna hit the target right in front of me oh he's almost dead now <laughs> We'll use a reaction to knock him prone. Oh, he saved, so it didn't work. Oh, 
Look how many radiating orb stacks I'm getting just from them missing me because of the holy damage I do. It's so powerful. All right, so now that it's my turn, we have double action, double bonus action. We're going to do one of my favorite things to do in the game, which is why I like going nine points into Monk. And that's because of the Resonation Fist. Technically, you could do this build going three levels Barbarian, three levels Champion for the extra crit, action surge, and extra AC, and go six levels Monk. But I like having the option to do big AOE damage here instead. So let's take a look at everyone. I don't want to one shot him right now, so I'll wait to attack him. So let's go ahead and attack the target in front of us. We're going to use Resonation Punch on the first target here. We're going to use Resonation Punch on this target there. We're going to use Not Blast yet. I still have two more actions. I use both my bonus actions to get some extra Resonation. So now let's use the other version here that requires an action. You can see he has it. Does this target? This target does not. Got it on that target. So you can see I have one. This target does not, so we'll use the other action to get this target here. So one, two, three, four, five. Five people have it, so we will go ahead and follow up using a key. And this does not take any action, and we'll use Blast. And they're all gone, and because of Call of the Week that Elithid power I talked about a little bit earlier. Look at the damage I just did right here. This is absolutely insane. Let's go all the way up. As you can see, there's there, there's quite a lot that happened here. Look at all that force damage here. So all this force damage is shared between all these targets because it's an AoE around the target that I do it with. It's extremely powerful, and even if one of these targets died from me attacking with my fist, you can still detonate their body, which is really cool. That's a lot of damage, not to mention all the Call of the Week damage you saw as I was scrolling up. So now we just have this one guy left up here, so I say we come on over and we try to stun him or simply attack him regularly. I say we go for this stun here and see if I can't get him to be stunned. So he's stunned. He can't do anything on his next turn. We'll go ahead and attack him again. He's almost dead. He has 9 HP. And then because Call of the Week, bam, bye bye. Alright guys, for this combat showcase, the final one, this is for those who want to respec after you do Raphael. Because you do get the Gloves of Soul Catching, which are just a monster legendary gloves. 110 D force damage on your fist attacks. Once per turn, you could heal or forgo the heal to gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Such a great set of gloves. You get the Amulet of Greater Health, giving you 23 Constitution. And because we are part Barbarian, we are going to get AC from our Constitution. With this build, we have 20 AC. We can't be crit because of our shield. And our AC is low enough to where we will still get hit, which is good. Because the Bone Spike Garb will do 6 damage back to the attacker because of our Constitution modifier. Reduces all damage by 2, which stacks with the reduced damage from being a bear barbarian. We will also do acid damage back to the enemy. And when we are not at max HP, we'll do additional necrotic damage as well. My starting sets, you can see, are a little different than what I had before. Feats and everything else are exactly the same, but now I just have slightly more wisdom since I, I didn't put any points in the constitution because of the neck piece. That way my boots will be a little bit better for even more damage with my fist. And we know Manifestation of Body does additional damage equal to your Wisdom modifier. So it's going to be another plus three on top of that. So the damage is going to be a little bit higher with this one compared to before. So we'll start out like we did before, pushing a speed. We'll go ahead and just punch him. Get this started. And one thing I forgot to do, I didn't actually turn Manifestation of uh, Soul one. So we'll go ahead and do that next. I'll go with the psychic damage this time. 
All right, so now that it's my turn, I am going to rage. This will give us our temporary hit points and 50% reduced damage. I'm going to go with Holiness of Bodies just to sh showcase like the uh, maximum burst you can do with this build. And we have one more thing we can do. So we're going to go ahead and stagger this guy. Or we'll just kill him. Whoops. And in case someone skipped to the end, I will showcase our fist damage is affected by raging. All right, well, now that's done, I'll just kind of come here in the middle and we will be good to go. Go ahead and try knocking this guy prone. Saves, unfortunate. Look at all the damage he's doing. I still have my temporary hit points and he's already almost at half just from attacking me. And all these guys that miss get sent reeling, so they'll probably miss again in the future. I, I just love this combo so much. I was actually hoping they would take away my temporary hit points. That way I could actually showcase the extra damage from the Berserker Helm. But it doesn't seem like it's actually happening. And you can take a look at your reactions. So Soul Catching Boon. So go ahead and turn this off at Ask just to have it automatically. Alright, let's go ahead and just kill these guys, shall we? The girl in front of us, we will go ahead and use Flurry of Blows. Just to make sure she is going to be one shot. This guy, we're going to punch. We'll use Flurry of Blows again. We'll go ahead and get this guy now. Oh, critical miss. A little unfortunate. That's actually crazy considering how much extra ch chance I have to hit. Nope, I'll let him do it. And because we have the ring of free action, I will never get ensnared either. So that is from my haste potion running out. But you can see all the extra damage here. This is why I wanted to showcase the Berserker Helm. He's actually taking damage from the Berserker Helm here as well, which is really nice. All right, and my raid actually ended that turn because I didn't attack because of my haste potion. So you would want to make sure you rage again if you are hasted by anyone and it runs out, obviously, which we are going to do. So we'll go ahead and pick this guy up. We're going to throw him just because I think it's fun. He dies. And then you have one more person left. And kind of like before, let's stun this guy in place. Was saved. And now, oh no. Pretend I'm low HP, even though I have multiple ways to heal, we'll use our heal this way. And let's throw this back at him right in his face. Bam. <laughs> I just love it so much. Anyway, guys, I'm Ronan. I really hope you enjoyed the build. If you guys did, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. I was really excited to remake my Raging Barbarian. It was dear to my heart because it's one of the first builds I made. And I just think it's really fun. And now that the bug is fixed, it actually can shine. So I really hope you enjoyed.